Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. The bank holiday weekend was quite a mixed affair. Low pressure brought showers or long spells of rain to parts of the United Kingdom. Now, with that said, there were also periods of warm sunshine to be found in places. But there is a change taking place currently. High pressure, not low pressure, is dominating. The animation here runs from 18 GMT, Wednesday the 8th. And at the outset, there's some rain there in the far northwest, maybe one or two showers across southern and central regions, but it's mainly dry. As I run the sequence, what we see is high pressure remains dominant, at least in the short term, so warm and dry conditions continue in much of the country. But into the weekend and the uncertainty grows. This particular computer model run, the GFS, shows a deep area of low pressure beginning to push in from the west. This is Sunday afternoon, but you may have noticed it also indicated the likelihood of some showers developing on Saturday ahead of this. By Sunday though, longer spells of rain are starting to push into the west, and once more, some heavy showers there across England and Scotland and Wales. Continuing this through to its end, it's a low pressure which once more becomes dominant, so it's changeable and settled. Heavy showers, long spells of rain, potentially very wet for a time. By the end here though, in the north it's drier with the low pressure centered just to the southwest. There is lots of uncertainty though about the transition back to a more unsettled pattern and I'll come back to that in a few moments. Here's the upper air temperature sequence. Remember on this, the yellows and oranges indicate warm air aloft at about 1500 meters above our heads. At this time of year, the greens and the light blues suggest cold air. As I run it, there's some yellows and oranges early on, so it's warm, but then as the low pressure comes into play, the greens return cooler air coming back across the United Kingdom by the, through the second half of the week. What does all that mean in terms of the conditions down at the surface? So just a few charts here from the same computer model run. This is Thursday afternoon, mostly dry, relatively warm. There are one or two showers being shown there in central and eastern England. I think it's probably overdoing the extent of the risk. Quite a pleasant day, temperatures up to about 21C in the south, 17 or 18 further north. Moving forwards to Saturday, if anything, it's a little bit warmer. There are some showers showing up on this, but once more, just to emphasize, I think it could be overdoing the extent of them. But by Sunday, a big change is taking place. Much more showery there across the UK. Temperatures a couple of degrees higher in the south, up to about 23, but the potential for some downpours if this is correct. And then into the early part of next week, so Tuesday the 14th, it's cooler, 14s, 15s, 16s there, and there's a risk of wet conditions really virtually anywhere. So a transition from the warm and settled start to changeable or unsettled weather later on according to the GFS. But I just want to come back to the weekend because as I've already flagged up, the transition, the timing of it is open to debate to an extent. This shows the uh, forecast chart for Sunday the 12th May from the Canadian model. GFS at this point had heavy showers over England, Wales and Scotland, heavy outbreaks of rain pushing into the southwest. On the other hand, this keeps it mostly dry, just some rain beginning to push into the southwest. It's a similar story with the ECM, dry in most of the UK, and finally the UK Met Office Global heavy showers there perhaps into the west, but certainly in much of central and eastern Britain, it's a dry story and quite a warm or even a very warm one. So I think to an extent at this stage, the GFS looks like an outlier. Most of the computer models are shown dry conditions continuing through Saturday, definitely, and probably Sunday too, particularly in central and eastern areas. Now on that basis, Here's the high resolution UKV model. This is for Saturday. There are a few showers shown across central and northern parts of England, eastern Scotland, one or two as well. 
generally though it's dry and the temperatures on the right there show that it's warm widely above 21 celsius 70 fahrenheit perhaps 24 in the london and southeastern parts of england forwards to sunday those heavy showers developing in the southwest and wales northern ireland scotland too but in central and eastern britain it is remaining mostly dry eastern scotland i'm including there of course and look at the temperatures up to about 26 maybe 27 celsius 81 fahrenheit in the london area so all in all the weekend starts off fine saturday a reasonable degree of confidence that it's going to be dry across virtually the whole of the country but by sunday the uncertainty grows most computer models disagree with the GFS and they keep it dry, at least in central and eastern Britain. But there is that growing risk of heavy showers in the west. Sunday may well be the peak warmth from this spell. Here are the aggregate rain charts for days 0 to 5. ECM on the left, GFS on the right. You can see the differences there. ECM's keeping the totals lower. It's because the breakdown, which is being forecast by the GFS, is coming later, according to the ECM. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, totals have increased here everywhere, so quite wet between days 5 and 10. ECM painting a particularly wet picture in Wales and the southwest. It's worth taking a quick look at the deterministic models to see if they're all going for that unsettled theme towards the end of the first week or not. Here is the GFS, Wednesday the 15th of May, a nasty area of low pressure centre close to the UK. The Canadian Global Model, also predominantly unsettled, with low pressure there to the southwest, a little bit different but broadly speaking similar, as is the German Icon, the European ECM, and finally the UK Met Global. This has a low pressure centred further north, so there are some differences, but it's a fairly unsettled pattern. There is always the possibility with this type of thing of warmer air, drier conditions perhaps pushing into the far southeastern corner. Not that this is showing that directly, but it does always hold out the prospect if a low pressure is centred a bit further northwest, something to keep an eye on. But taking them all together, it's an unsettled scenario by the end of the first week. There could be some hefty downpours around, maybe some thundery showers, longer spells of rain too. Now, does that continue to be the case as we head through the second week? Of course, it's just about the trends and probabilities of this range. So using the ensemble data, first up, the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top, the thick purple line, staying a little bit above a thick black line, so the ensemble mean above a 30-year average for most of the second week, for all of it, in fact. There is some divergence, of course, between the runs, one or two very warm outliers and a couple of much chillier ones. But all in all, it looks like temperatures at this level at least will be a little bit above the norm. But along the bottom, lots of rain spikes early on. They perhaps decrease later but there is an ongoing risk of rain through the second week. It certainly looks like it could be very wet for a time towards the end of the first and into the early part of the second week. The two metre temperature data tables for London, predominantly orange, those runs going for between 16 and 20s during the days. The overnight lows, six to tens, light greens, but mostly yellows between 10 at 11 and 15 Celsius. So temperatures not a big, issue it's really going to be dependent on the amount of cloud cover sunshine during the days when when it appears the temperatures will rise rapidly likewise with cloud cover at night will tend to keep things milder or quite muggy up to manchester the profile here is very similar plenty of rain spikes along the bottom there perhaps a fewer towards the end two meter temperatures similar pattern to london most of the runs through the days are going for maximums between 16 and 20. The overnight lows a little bit down on the London value, 6 and 10 being the dominant uh, pattern here through week two. There are a few runs as well on both of these uh, data tables, the London and Manchester ones, which are going 
into the 21 to 25 Celsius bucket it just really emphasizes I think that when the sun shines it will be turning quite warm but big question marks about how much sun there will be. The uh, temperate the GEFS plot for Glasgow similar really to the Manchester and London ones good consistency rain continuing to be a risk through the second week so the distribution of rain isn't very clear cut it looks fairly even at this stage there doesn't seem to be a bias towards the south or the north at least it's not immediately obvious the two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow similar trends really lower of course through the days and overnight Still a few runs there in the darker green, which are going for minimums between 1 and 5 Celsius, so ground frost not out of a question. Here, whilst in Manchester and London, it appeared to be very unlikely. The ECM probability charts here showing the chance of 5 millimetres or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week, quite high. The greens there suggest around 50%, maybe 40 to 60 in general terms. On the left-hand chart and the centre chart, the one on the right there, actually has the greatest risk of significant rain over the southern half of the UK. So all parts of the country could be seeing a fair amount of rain. Moving forwards to the following three days, perhaps perhaps more of a typical distribution starting to return there at least on the centre and right hand charts with the wettest conditions are likely to be in the northwest of the United Kingdom, drier maybe in central and eastern areas. All in all though, plenty of rain around, at least the potential for there to be plenty of rain across the UK through week two. The GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Saturday the 18th has high pressure to the southwest. Quite a mixed slack flow across the United Kingdom. It is, of course, generated by averaging out all of the individual runs, so determining the pattern can be quite difficult, but it doesn't paint a settled picture. Showers or longer spells of rain at times at least. The uh, GEFS mean surface level pressure table for York. So this is going through the second week. Low pressure dominating early on. There's plenty of green there, runs between 996 and 1010 millibars. But there is an upwards trend. The amount of yellow grows at 1011 to 1025. It's indicating a growing chance later on of drier periods returning. And that ties in quite nicely, I think, with the amount of rain spikes decreasing a little bit later on as I showed on those previous charts. So to summarise week one, it's settled and warm in much of the UK to begin with. There is still a risk of rain though in the northwest. But as we go through the weekend, a change begins to take place. The timing of that is somewhat uncertain, but low pressure will be starting to push in from the Atlantic. It's going to be bringing a growing risk of showers or long spells of rain, potentially very wet later on. But in terms of weekend, Saturday should be dry across most of the UK, Sunday, that's where you'll need to keep an eye on the short range forecasts, but the favoured solution at the moment is for central and eastern Britain to have periods of warm or even very warm sunshine. Temperatures peaking in the mid-20s, 27 Celsius, 81 Fahrenheit is not entirely out of a question. But in the west, downpours become more likely. Into week two, it's an unsettled start but the chance of dry spells probably increases later. Temperatures, to a large extent, will be dependent upon the amount of cloud cover, but where the sun breaks through, it will become warm once more. Overall, though, temperatures probably close to or a little bit above the average. So, uh, there we have it. I think the advice is to make the most of the dry and warm weather in the short term because then it is going to be turning more changeable again. It could start to turn drier through the second half of the second week, but that is an awfully long way off, of course. Well, 
I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please remember to hit the like button below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And of course, stay up to date with the short range forecasts, the day-to-day -day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.